Uh, just first, can you explain um, for you guys the last couple days of practice? What's it been like to have guys in spots trying to figure out who plays well where, I guess, for you? Uh, it's been great. Uh, we're learning a lot. It's also been sloppy. Um, trying to learn. At, we're throwing a lot at the guys. The first four practices, we threw a ton offensively, a ton defensively, and they're picking it up. But it's one, it's one of those – we do it one time, and then the next time down the court, we don't. And they look at you and say, oh, I'm supposed to do that. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, at least they're recognizing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, but then when, it, when they do it right, it looks good. At least from a coach's perspective, it looks good. Um, but that's been the main thing. The main thing is just we're throwing a lot at them. They're picking it up. Our guys have great energy. Our, the energy of our practice and our enthusiasm has been great, and our guys play very hard. Now it's just learning what we're trying to do schematically and make sure that we can combine the schemes – and the energy, and then, you know, then the sky's the limit for our team. And then with Kai, JB mentioned he's not sure where he's going to play him um, position-wise. So what do you see from him out there so far? Is he more of a four, more of a five? For people who haven't seen his game, what do you see from him out there so far in practice? You know, he's got a little bit of both. You know, he obviously has a look, you know, the handle on the perimeter. You know, he can dribble a little bit, especially, and he's, I mean, his, his first step is very, very quick. Um so that definitely helps him on the perimeter attacking fours and then fives. He's a big guy. Like he's big, he's strong, athletic. He, you know, the one thing that has surprised me the most is a lot of those guys that are athletic dunkers, high flyers, lob guys. They're, you know, one skill that he has is he's a great shot fake guy. You know, you'll see that he, you know, he gets into the paint shot fakes, gets the big in the air. And then, you know, if I shot fake somebody, I'm not leaving the floor, you know, to get up and score him. He's shot faking, let him go by and then dunking on him. So like that, that's an impressive skill. You know, you see guys that are able that have that similar athleticism. They just try to dunk everything, whereas he's able to, you know, slam on the brakes and then, you know, go up and explode. But, you know, he's got a lot of skills. And, we're, and like JB said, we're trying to figure him out. We're putting him at the four. We're putting him at the five. You know, we're having him set screens. We're having him roll. We're having him pop. You know, we're like, we, like I said the other day, we're trying to figure him out. And he's trying to figure us out of how he can be best in our system. Thanks, Dutch. Sam Farber, go ahead. Hey, Dutch, with uh, with – Kai and JT from this year's draft, as well as Nick Richards and Vereen Carey from last year's, have you started to work out uh, rotation for, you know, four, five or three, four and five that you're planning to use? Or is there any criteria that you use to you know, allocate minutes as you get into summer league with maybe one of the more crowded positions? Uh, it's a great question because, you know, rotation is something that, you know, I have near and dear to my heart because I work with JB a lot during the season on rotation. Um, but since we have three, you know, three, four, you know, multiple bigs, I'm very happy to pass that on to uh, Jordan Surencamp. He's going to be in charge of the rotations. But to be honest about your question, um, we're trying to figure it out because we also we're trying to, you know, have quality over quantity. Instead of having a guy, you know, hey, you played, you played all five games and you played, you know, 18 minutes versus all right, maybe you know one guy plays four games and you played 28 minutes. So we just want to make sure we're putting everybody in the right light because we want to show their skills off because we need to see that. Um, but it's definitely a conversation that we're having myself, you know, JB, you know, along with Mitch and buzz and Larry and just understanding of like, all right, where, where are we playing guys, making sure the right foot. Cause the worst thing is that, you know, a guy only gets six minutes and then they're frustrated and we're frustrated. So we're trying to, we're trying to figure that plan out right now, but I am very happy that I am passing off that response the doing it in game to one of our other coaches, but I'll, I'll definitely have a say with, you know, along with JB and, you know, the front office. Thank you, Coach. Richie, go ahead. Hey, Doug. First, first off, Richie, don't ask about Outer Banks because I finished it. Uh, I finished it. I finished it. No comment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Kai, I was going to ask the question about playing four or the five, but uh, if you had to pinpoint one skill that's going to make the most immediate impact on the next level for him, what, what do you see that skill being? His energy and athleticism. Like that's it's, it's above the charts, and he plays hard at all times. You know, you're going to see – it, and his best, he's going to be at his best in transition. We get stops. He runs. He puts his head on the rim. You know that we've already had when our, whenever our media team puts out, we've already had some lobs from Book and some other players. Like that's going to be his number one thing. Like he's his energy, and then and then it's on us to now the game slows down and gets on the half court. How am I able to put him in the best spot so that he can still showcase that that athleticism? But when the defense is set, but his energy, athleticism is through, and and it's just like his. 
childhood joy for the game is just, I mean, it, the guy's got a smile on his face at all times. It's, it's great to be around. It's, it's him and Mello are going to be a lot of fun because they both bring that energy and that joyfulness. And just every time you step into the gym, they got a smile on their face. And that, that's just, that's fun to, to see every single day. Thank you. A couple more guys. We'll go with Danny Thompson and wrap up with James. Touch of Danny Thompson with a three point conversion. Great to see you as always. Two quick ones. One, you've been as an assistant working with JB and Jay Triano, and you've worked with other head coaches in the past. What have they, what advice have they given you in this opportunity to run a summer league as a head coach? Um, they've, they've done a great job of telling me to trust my staff. You know, there, there's no, just how JB trusts us, there's how, you know, Coach Triano, when, you know, his, his experience as coaches, you can't do every single thing yourself. You can't be in charge of the offense, in charge of the defense. Like I, I just, uh, you know, touched on the rotations. You can't do everything yourself. So I'm very thankful of the, you know, the other assistants that have that have volunteered to help me along with our video guys, and they've done an excellent job. You know, just trusting them. Guys are getting put in situations that they, you know, for example, Nick Friedman, one of our assistants, and Jordan, they don't run a ton of drills with the whole team during practice. And the thing now they're able to to do that and they just, you know, get a load of experience. Similar to myself, you know, Chad Iskey is going to be with us and he, you know, he obviously runs our, you know, runs our defense and he, and he runs the drills, but he's going to be a, a guy I lean on a lot, but really trusting those other guys. Hey, I can't, you can see right now, I've already lost my voice. So I can't run every single drill, but trusting those guys of, Hey, you, you run this drill. I got full confidence and they, they've done an excellent job. So I think just trusting the assistants to, to help me out and that I can't do everything by myself. And a quick follow-up, when you look at the players that are not on the roster, like guys like Leandro Ball, guys that don't have a roster spot, what are you looking for to those guys so they can earn a roster spot? What are some of the things that need they need to do to stand out to the to you thing, and the coach staff? The main thing and I told I told everybody, you know, in our first meeting is that you're we have multiple guys, and I think we'll have five on our roster next year that have that have had that can go out and get you 30. And we need guys that if you're looking for a roster spot, who can keep the offense moving, you know, who can attack a closeout and make the right play and not look for their own shot. And then defensively, who can understand our schemes and really understand what we're trying to do defensively to keep the ball out of the paint, contest every shot and play with great physicality. If you're able to do that, we're not looking for anybody to be like, hey, you're Kawhi Leonard, go shut somebody down. You know, that's that's tough to do. But if you can do our defensive schemes and understand what we're trying to do defensively and then offensively keep the offense moving and move the ball, you know, you'll 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 put yourself in a great light. And then then it comes down to when the ball does get to you. Can you make an open shot? You know, not forcing shots. But then when the ball finds you, you may get five opportunities. You know, if you make four, you might get some more looks. You make one, you might not. But just making sure that you're taking the right shots and also getting other people's shots. Thanks, Dutch. A couple more for your coach. Uh, we're going to do James Plowright, and then we'll actually wrap up with Sam Perley. Hey, Dutch. James Plowright from At The Hive. We'll try and keep it short. Don't want to lose any more of your voice. Um, great accent. <laughs> just wanted to touch on uh, on Aldous Kuboka, who's come over for Summer League this year and signed the two-way. Obviously, a lot of Charlotte fans and even the coaches haven't seen an Aldous now in two, three years since his last Summer League outing. So, what have you seen from him and, and kind of anything unexpected or how has he developed his game since you last saw him? Well, Arnie's definitely gotten better. You know, that's, that's the first thing His his body looks stronger. His legs look stronger. Um, I think that's one of the first developments. And we already knew at the level when he first came over that he had a high IQ basketball wise, and he's been able to continue that on. And now just his confidence and his shot, you know, and understanding that, you know, we're not counting on you to go get, 20 points. We're counting you pick and pop, shoot, shoot the jumper. They, they close out on you attack. And he's a very good passer. Um, we need, we're working on his defense. I think that's the main thing that is if Arnie makes the NBA, you know, how, who's he going to guard threes or fours? That's what we're trying to figure out right now. And we're putting him in a lot of different stuff. We're switching with him. Some we're putting him in coverage defensively. So I think that's the main thing, but his basketball IQ is very high. You know, he, his shot looks very, very good. Um, and then, you know, he's a great, just, you know, naturally as a European player, he's a great passer. So when he's able to get in, he's making the right plays. It's just trying to help him defensively. You know, how, how can we understand what his strengths and weaknesses are, you know, and add to the strengths and limit the weaknesses.